Welcome back. As in any democracy, informed discourse is paramount if we are to reach common solutions to our problems. Shifan spoke with Asanga Valikala to gain further insight into the issue of constitutional change for power sharing. Asanga, going by the number and variety of publications in the document, uh, there seem to have been uh, several unsuccessful attempts at power sharing in the past. Uh, do you think uh, things have changed now? No, I don't think things have changed. I think the debate goes on very much uh, in the way that it has gone on in, during that 80 years or so that we have uh, considered. Um, so it starts somewhere you know, in the 1920s, uh, before independence even, uh, uh, in terms of how to share power uh, within one single country uh, in a context in which we have more than one community um, uh, in the country and, and to share power equally uh, and equitably. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, and that debate obviously has been going on. Uh, and perhaps uh, in one sense, the only successful attempt at in introducing uh, some form of power sharing into the Constitution itself is the 13th Amendment. But as we know, there are uh, structural flaws with it, as well as uh, problems of implementation uh, in the last 20 years or so that it has been in existence. Uh, but the debate goes on. So the, it is in that context that we thought uh, 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 a contribution like this uh, would be useful for the purposes of having a more informed debate uh, about the historical efforts that have been uh, taken uh, mm -hmm. on this question by some of Sri Lanka's most creative minds, uh, but uh, so far which have eluded uh, a permanent answer in Sri Lanka, unfortunately. All right. And uh, a lot of people have been uh, saying that uh, constitutional reform uh, pol and political reform is necessary for Sri Lanka to achieve a lasting peace. Yes. Uh, why do they say this? Well, we, for example, the four co-editors of this book are individually as well as collectively now in, in the form of this book associated with uh, <coughs> a school of thought in this country which believes uh, that um, radical constitutional reform is necessary uh, for ensuring peace uh, in, in this way. And that is that I think without uh, ensuring um, that uh, communities feel represented in the state, mm -hmm. uh, communities feel that they are able to have a voice uh, within the politics of the country, uh, to do so uh, without a sense of domination by one or the other, uh, and to live, therefore, co uh, coexist peacefully. Uh, that is the purpose of, of a constitutional document. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, uh, well, uh, most if not all of the constitutional documents that we have had in the past have been unfortunately unable to ensure that. So even now, I think it is important. Uh, some people would say now that the LTT has been militarily defeated and that, that issue is not there anymore, separatism. Mm -hmm. I think the, the fundamental root causes of the problem, uh, the political root causes that led to the creation of, of an organization, a terrorist organization like the LTT, still remain unaddressed. So very much uh, the debate about uh, power sharing, about how to address, uh, uh, in particular Tamil, but also Muslim, and other communities claims to political power. Now that you touched on the state, I'd like to ask you, the present government, uh, one of its election promises was that it was going to bring about an end to the conflict. Yes. And uh, one instrument was the APRC. Right. Uh, can you talk about the pros and cons of this mechanism? Sure. Well, a lot of people treated the APRC from the very beginning uh, with a lot of skepticism um, uh, because of the fact that uh, the, AP, the sort of all-party mechanism has been used in the past, particularly in the 1980s, by the presidents, uh, Jayavadana president, mm -hmm. um, Premadas, and so on, and nothing really came out of it, that they were considered to be mere talk shops where you know, nothing really came out of it. And many people feel that the present APRC also has gone down that path. I think that the, the process is not over yet. Uh, we still don't know what the, what the final report has been. Minister Vitharana has presented to the President as he has uh, publicly said that he has. We don't know what the contents of that report are. And we, I, I remain optimistic that uh, <clears throat> there may be constructive ideas there that we can use. And certainly the APRC was very valuable. I think the present APRC was very valuable in terms of the ideas that, that its panel of experts generated, particularly from my perspective, from where I come from, mm -hmm. uh, the majority uh, report. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's the type of uh, direction that constitutional reform in this country must go. Uh, we need to go beyond the 13th Amendment. Do you think the government has the political backing to uh, go through with uh, its uh, proposals? I think insofar as there's been, uh, since DS Nanayaka in this country, a leader, a Sinhalese uh, president, uh, a head of government, uh, who can, in fact, have the, the absolute political legitimacy to, to, to push through a, a settlement to this, pro, uh, to, to this issue. 
in, in, in power sharing lines, uh, it is President Rajpaksa. Uh, he, he enjoys uh, an unprecedented amount of, of, of popular support at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, people believe him when they tell, uh, you know, when, when he says that if he, if he pushes through power sharing and issues that personal guarantee, that uh, the LTT has been defeated. I have been responsible for that. Separatism is no more. But in the interests of ethnic justice, we need to uh, share power. And, and I believe that he, he's, he's a man who can do it.